there's some amazing things about our local history that I think we, we tend to either overlook or downplay. I've heard people say, you know, nothing interesting ever happened here. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So many amazing things happened here. When people tell me they think history is dull or boring, I, I just does not compute with me. I'm just endlessly fascinated by it. And there's an infinite amount of things to learn. I do love local history. It's very, you know, meaningful to me. I like to try to understand uh, what the lives of people who went before us here were like. Stories are one of the many things that can bring people together. But what makes a story so powerful is an author's ability to resonate with people. Armed with a passion for history, novelist Bill Grant has found a way to do just that. In the early 1900s, when uh, Dan River Mills was starting to boom, uh, and you had a lot of, and, and they needed workers, and the mill went out and it recruited workers from the, from the countryside, from the mountains, and they didn't recruit uh, like we might, might today, they didn't recruit a person, they wanted to hire the whole family. So the whole family would, would come and go to work and they would rent a house in the mill communities and they would work in the mill. Uh, and it was called public work. Uh, and in those days, public work, meaning wage earning jobs, were unusual. Most people lived off what they made on their farms. They were subsistence farmers or small farmers. Now, my stories uh, that I tell in, in both of my mill novels also have a very strong uh, agrarian theme. So there are farm workers there, and I think anyone who reads my stories won't have any trouble figuring out which of the two lives I preferred. <laughs> but, um, but at the same time, uh, there are characters in my story who love working in the mill, you know, who thought it was their dream come true. They didn't have to worry anymore about whether or not the corn was gonna come up or they would be able to sell it for enough to cover their fertilizer costs and uh, they were gonna get paid every week and they were gonna have a place to live in their own home. And So it just depends on how you look at it. While several of Garant's inspirations go beyond city limits, his novel Jim Rin is a homegrown story. For as long as he can remember, Grant has had a strong love for history, and the history of our own Dan River Mills shines through. In, in 2017, I found that I had time on my hands in the winter, because farm work goes kind of quiet in the winter, and I had, I had some time. So I decided to research and, and write a history of life in our community in the year 1918, figuring it would take me about a year to get the book done. It would come out in 2018, so I'd be telling what life was like 100 years earlier. In the course of that research, uh, while doing research at the Danville Library, I found a story written in, the, in 1918 in the Danville newspaper about a young widow uh, who had two children that she couldn't care for and wanted to uh, find homes for. The story was very moving, it was very intriguing. I was like, what happened to her husband? Why isn't she able to take care of the children? What about her family? What about his family? Why has she come to this desperate situation? What, uh, you know, it said in the article that the chief of police more or less vouched for her uh, credibility. I'm like, what's that all about? So I tried to find answers to those questions and I couldn't find the answers. So one day I was here working on the farm and I just started imagining. Uh, what might have happened. And that became the, the Jim Wren novel. I started dictating little episodes into the, 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 the voice recorder on my smartphone. And before you know it, I had over 200 of them and I had the outline of the story. It, but it, it tries to tell what life was like. It tries to give a social history of our community. And I try to do it honestly and um, uh, sympathetically, but without rose coloring anything. There's a lot of tragedy in the story. But there's a resilience in the story too, and I and I think those are, uh, I, I, in my opinion, my judgment, uh, those things, that work ethic, that care for your for your fellow, uh, for your neighbor, and that resilience and hardship, those are things that have characterized the story of people in this community, uh, probably forever, but at least for the last 150 years or so, and those are the things that I tried to to uh, illustrate in the in the book.